Hello, 7th grade ELA student. This is Ms. Tolman. I'm reading through lessons for Ms. Player. Um, we are in our Unit 4, interacting with text, writing a book review, and a narrative. And we are in our Lesson 2, interacting with and analyzing a text. There is quite a bit of vocabulary in this lesson. So it is a great idea to have that ready to go so that have your notebook ready to go so that you can take notes as we go as well as these are going to help with writing later and any t tests or quizzes you may have coming up in the unit. We start with our vocabulary. We have annotate, which is to take notes alongside a text. Brainstorm, to think about ideas concerning a topic. Free write, to jot down on paper any and all ideas about a topic without regard to grammar, spelling, or punctuation. Illustrate, to draw images or symbols for an explanation. Interact, to work together or have an effect on each other. Objective, regarding point of view, writing only facts without opinions. Perspective, point of view or position. Prejudiced, opinions based on cultural or social differences, not on verified facts. Subjective, regarding point of view, writing with opinions. And synthesize to take parts of information, add new information, and make new conclusions. All right, comprehension strategies. <coughs> comprehension strategies are ways to interact with the text to understand it better. To interact means to work together or to have an effect on each other. You have already made predictions, asked questions, and taken notes about your book in lesson one. You have also used your background knowledge and connected the ideas to yourself and society. There are several other ways to interact with the text. A reader may take notes in a journal or use sticky notes to remember important information. Good idea. The reader also may annotate, meaning take notes alongside the text. Now this is only if it's your own book. If it's not your own book, the sticky note route is the way to go. When annotating, the reader may summarize information, make comments, or point out structures in the text. The reader usually writes these in the margin of the text. However, if the book or text does not belong to you, that's probably not a good idea. You can use the sticky notes. A person, who <clears throat> a person can also free write to interact with the text. To free write means to jot down on paper any and all ideas about a topic without regard to grammar, spelling, and punctuation. This is writing one's own thoughts down as they flow. <clears throat> when doing this, the person does not stop to make corrections. This helps to formulate ideas into words without interruption. This is a way to brainstorm, which is to think about ideas concerning a topic. Another reading comprehension strategy is to make mental images. <clears throat> this is when a reader focuses on the words in the text and makes a picture in the mind. The mind usually already does this on some degree when a person reads. However, this can be done more purposefully to understand a text. Illustrating is a common strategy that you, <clears throat> you've probably already done. To illustrate means to draw images or symbols for explanation. Quite often, authors insert illustrations into a text to make it more easily understood. However, when readers use this strategy and draw illustrations, they do not need to be extremely detailed or artistic. The purpose is strictly for the reader to better understand the text. This is not to create a work of art. <clears throat> To synthesize is to take parts of information, add new information, and make new conclusions. When readers take information from several sources or relate new information to what they already know, they add to the comprehension of material. Synthesizing is also necessary in writing. Original writing is synthesizing by making new and interesting associations. It's like creating new, a new recipe. All of the ingredients have already been a part of different recipes but the cook mixes them up to create a new dish with a unique taste. Understanding an author's perspective. <clears throat> an author's perspective is a point of view or position. Although a point of view can refer to how the author positions herself in the text, it can also refer to how much personal judgment the author puts in a text and what that view is about the subject matter. You may have chosen a book with just an objective perspective. Objective, which is regarding point of view, is writing only facts without opinions. An objective perspective is considered fair and not influenced by any personal feelings or motives. 
here's some examples of objective writing. Darnell left his house at 7.30 a.m. and walked down the street to Marco's house. No opinions there. Just facts. Cinco de Mayo is the celebration of the Battle of Puebla when the Mexican army defeated France in 1862. Facts. No opinions. On the other hand, you might have chosen a book with a subjective perspective. Subjective, regarding point of view, is writing with opinions. Opinions are personal views on a subject that can be debated. However, good nonfiction has valid judgments based on actual situations, results, or facts. The extremely subjective point of view is prejudiced. Prejudice is an opinion based on cultural or social differences and not on verified facts. Good readers judge an author's perspective by analyzing the author's motives. When reading a text, ask yourself these questions to understand if the text is highly subjective and has, a, has questionable information. So is the author basing opinions on verifiable facts? Is the author trying to persuade me to think or do something? Does the author give source information for facts from reputable sources like universities or agencies in good standing? What is the motive of the author? Is it religious, political, or personal? And number five, is the author trying to obtain power, money, or some other kind of gain? Here's some examples of subjective writing. Andre Tillman at Deluxe Seafood is the best Creole chef in the South because his stuffed crab melts in your mouth. That's one person's opinion. Somebody else may not like that Deluxe Seafood restaurant, so that's subjective. We knew that the data from the poll was wrong because it appeared to be too favorable for them. Well, who's, who says it's too favorable for them? Do the facts say it or do they say it? This backpack is made with the highest quality material. Highest quality material according to who? If in doubt about the validity of information in a text, do more research on the topic. Sometimes getting at the truth of the matter means taking time to investigate several sources. All right, that's it for the reading portion. You're on to the questions. These are matching the definitions. I got some more matching here. And then these are more questions about your book that you are reading through for this lesson. So let us know if you have any questions. We're more than happy to help. That's what we're here for. We're here for you. We got you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You're doing an amazing job, guaranteed. All right, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.